What is up guys and welcome back to the Hammer Dance YouTube channel. It's been a while, we took a little bit of a break there, but now we're coming back strong. Right now I'm bringing to you guys a full OBS Studio Master Class series. Um, this is going to be with the latest settings, this is the latest version of OBS, so basically this is going to be your 2021 uh, at least the start of 2021 guide to setting up OBS. Everything you guys need to know, we're going to dive in, we're going to dissect the software. So this is really catered more towards people who are just getting into this now. Um, I mean, people who have been using OBS for a little bit of time uh, will definitely benefit as well. I'll show you guys some tips and tricks. We're going to go over uh, scene nesting, all that kind of stuff as well. So that's what this is going to be about, guys. We're going to have a whole playlist. It's going to be about 10 videos long. Um, so. Here is the OBS Master Class 2021 edition. But before we jump in guys, let's give a shout out and thank you to our sponsor for today's video, Owned.TV. Owned.TV is the place to go guys if you're looking for some fresh new graphics for your stream. Whether you're on Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook gaming, you'll find something that's a perfect fit for your channel. They offer full themed overlay packages, which are great if you're trying to give your stream a complete makeover, but let's say you're just looking to pick up some new alert graphics, don't worry, because they've got you covered there too. You could find single graphics such as alerts, banners, panels, and logos as well. And one of the best parts about most of these overlays is that they are completely modular. So if you and your friends all pick up the same overlay, such as this Rodan one right here, you can change the colors and tweak it to match your brand and none of you will have the exact same overlay. If you guys are looking to take your stream to the next level, be sure to check out own.tv using my link below to support the channel. All right guys, so for this video, this is the first video in the Masterclass series. So this is gonna be a very basic, um, this is gonna be the introduction to OBS. I'm gonna show you where everything is within the software, um, everything that you guys are gonna to need to set up to go live, add your scenes, add your sources, um, you know, edit your audio devices, all that stuff. We're not gonna dive into how to do that stuff. We're gonna basically give a brief overview of the software itself, of the interface, and so you guys know where everything is. So we're gonna start up here at the toolbar at the top, which is your menu. We have file here. This is where you can access your settings. Um, if you want to hit always show on top, that means that no matter what you have on your screen, if OBS is on that display as well, it'll sit on top of any other windows you have there. Some people like to use that. I've used it in some occasions as well. So next over we have edit. Um, all of these functions up here at the toolbar, keep in mind, can be done here by right clicking, all that kind of stuff. But we're going to just go through this toolbar so you guys know what's up there. So you have your copy here if you want to copy a scene or a source or something and then duplicate it. Um, you can transform something. So let's say we click on an, an asset within our video and we want to transform that asset, um, you know, the size or flip it or reflect it or scale it. Anything like that will be done there. Um, you can lock your preview so that that's locked and can't be turned off or anything like that. You could also access your advanced audio properties up here as well so as for view we can use a full screen interface here um, we can add docs which are what you see on the sides here my twitch chat and my twitch activity feed those are both custom docs that i have added here we'll get into that in a later video um, and this is basically showing what you have visible within your obs um, user interface so if you turn these off they will disappear from the interface itself this is a stats bar you could pull this up and we'll pull it over to this screen um, and this basically is showing your stats while you're recording or streaming it shows your cpu usage your disk space um, your memory usage your fps uh, your average time to render a frame, all that stuff. Uh, pretty cool information here. I don't really use this that much. Uh, some people may want to have that up on another display though. That's how you would access that. Profile, this is grayed out right now because we're recording, but you can basically set up different profiles um, that have different settings. So like if you want to set up one profile in OBS to be your streaming profile, and then another one to be your recording profile, you can do that there and then just switch between the two easily by clicking profile and then selecting the profile that you want to use. Scene collection, uh, pretty much the exact same thing as the profile thing. However, scene collection is the scenes and the sources down here. So I have, this is my main one, Untitled. Um, you can, so if I were to create a new scene collection, the scenes and sources down here would all go blank and I can create uh, and edit new scenes and sources and all my settings as well. Um, so that you can switch, you know, switch back and forth between two. Let's say you stream on one platform uh, and then you also want to stream on another platform, but you want to have different scenes and sources for each. Maybe one time you do a podcast and on another platform you're gaming. Uh, that's where this would come into play. You can set up different scene collections. So with the click of one button, have all your scenes that you need activated for you in your interface. Tools, this is, um, so if you want to set up NDI, which is another type of uh, 
you know, you can send your video signal from one PC to another through Ethernet, um, your Elgato remote control. This is basically just some extra stuff within OBS. I don't use much of this at all. I have used NDI in the past, um, but none of this is actually completely necessary when you're just learning OBS. And here, obviously, you have your help. This is where you can check for updates for the OBS software. You can apply this and then it will download the latest update or it'll tell you that yours is currently up to date. Your crash reports can be here, your log files, the help portal in case you need help. And this will bring you to the website and this will bring you to the OBS Discord server. So if you're looking at my OBS, it probably looks a little bit different than yours if you just downloaded it. Like I said before, these things on the side, these are custom docs that I added so that I don't have to have an, a Chrome window open to see my Twitch activity feed or my Twitch chat. I use docs within OBS. These are live. Um, I will show you how to set those up in a later video in the series. So that's what these are on the side docs here. This is your preview window. This is where you basically get to see and set up your scenes and your sources, add all your assets. Uh, that's all done right here. This is your live preview of what your viewers are seeing or you know how your recording is going to be coming out. That's what's in this window right here. Down here, this is your scene section. This is where we will create scenes. Um, and what a scene is in OBS is basically a group of assets that you will be displaying to your stream or to your recording. So right now in this scene that I'm using my main scene, we have my camera, my camera border, um, my display capture so that you guys can see my OBS and what I'm doing here. Um, and those are all within that scene. If we switch the scene, this scene has no camera. So it's different groups. In those scenes, you have different sources grouped together. Um, so you'll use a bunch of different scenes to do different things for your stream. Uh, as you can see here, like when I want to go to the bathroom real quick or grab a drink, switch to my Be Right Back scene, and that's what's on my Be Right Back screen. Um, it's simple as that. Different scenes are just, as you would imagine it, in a movie or a TV show, different scenes. They're a collection of different assets, and they show different things to your viewers. Over here are the sources. This is what is within the scene. So if we have this scene selected, these sources are in that scene. As you can see, if we go to the Be Right Back screen here, oh, you can't see it because my OBS is not on this. But that's a prime example right there of that if you switch to a scene, it'll change to whatever assets are in the sources down here. Right here is your audio mixer. So I use a Go XLR. Um, so I just have one audio device right here. This is my microphone, my system sounds, my game sounds, my Discord, all comes through my broadcast mix. Um, if you don't have a Go XLR and you're using like a USB microphone um, and a headset, we will be going over how to set up all those audio devices later on in the series as well. Like I said, this is gonna be like a 10 video long series on OBS. But for this video, we're just going over the user interface and letting you guys know where everything is and the things that we're gonna be messing around with and tweaking in this series right here these are your scene transitions so a transition is basically what happens between switching from scenes you can have it set to fading you can do custom ones you can have a swipe um, so when you switch scenes it'll you know swipe it out and put the new scene over it um, that's basically what that is right there I'm sure you guys can understand that this is your start streaming button you hit this button you're going live wherever your key is set up to that's where you're going live. So that is the start streaming button. This is the recording button. Right now we're recording obviously. So it says stop recording. So if I click that, it would stop this recording. Don't worry about the virtual camera right now. Studio mode is if you want to do a little bit more, um, more advanced stuff with transitioning and things like that. You can kind of set up a scene to transition to before actually transitioning to it. I don't use that much, but people, you know, like Dr. Disrespect and people who have higher production streams definitely use studio mode settings right here obviously if we open this up it brings up all your settings within obs which we will be doing a video going over all the settings that you guys need to get started as well and then obviously your exit button is right here that will close out the program so that really covers that guys it's basically i just wanted to give you guys a brief overview of the interface of obs to get familiar with it before we dive into this class so this was the first video in the master class series i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did Hit that like button that lets me know that you guys enjoyed the video consider subscribing to the channel and turning on those post notifications all right guys so that's all from me i want you to keep those hammers up and i'll see you next time